Hey, I have to adjust you, though. Of course I do. Uh, hi, everybody, while I'm adjusting Joe, because he's, like, nowhere near... Uh... Ooh, stop, that feels funny. Of course I do. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm also not muted on my channel, because it always unmutes me. I'm sorry, I, I had to make the bad joke there. Yeah, it's fine. Let me just Hey, don't it. click there! Ow! Anyway, got, uh, hello everybody, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. It's only Joe and me this week, and it's going to be a shorter one. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, I will have a channel announcement video that I'm going to be recording tonight and getting out tomorrow. So expect that out to like let you know about the you know, updated schedule and stuff. And yes, there hasn't been any like major videos and stuff this week, if you would have, uh, haven't noticed. Oh, that didn't fix it. Great. Fix me, fix me! Oh, it did, it did, but it readjusted the size of the square that you were in. <laughs> you know, so it was like, it didn't fit into the pace. There we go, we're back to normal. So yeah, welcome, Discussing Tabletop. We're working, we're fine, we're functioning. Well, but, as normal as I can get. God. So, our topics for today, we'll talk about the Ixalan release a little bit. We are going to be picking up some cards, probably today, both of us, so we'll have a better idea about things about it. <laughs> And of course, I've got barking dog in the background. As soon as I start, <laughs> you did. You couldn't wait until like you know beforehand, dog. No, you had to wait till I actually started. Of course. Wait. Same with the little knees. And knees. She, they couldn't have waited until like <laughs> you know did this right beforehand. No, they had to wait. Oh no, no, they they waited until you're off. <laughs> <laughs> they want to be famous too. Aurora, please be quiet. Just be a little quieter. Don't scream. Thank you. Anyway, uh, then we'll talk about Winter Eternal, a Pathfinder uh, campaign setting, which is really interesting. I do want to talk about the new Shadowrun missions and the Splendor... Well, it's the City of Splendor for the Splendor game uh, a little bit. But that's all the topics we're going to talk about this week. But let's dive a little bit into Ixalan because it has been released. And, I mean, we've had a bunch of guests talking about uh, Ixalan with us, but I don't think we've gotten our opinion as much. At least, Joe, I mean, like, you haven't had a chance to see what you think about some of the cards and stuff as much. Like, diving into what your opinion is. See if you had some ones you could pick out that you really liked. Uh, um, uh, give me a second. <laughs> so, Bringing I mean, up Paige. <laughs> well, I mean, there are a few more since we didn't talk about last week that I can talk about. Like, um... Access of Morality, the enchantment where at the beginning of your upkeep you may have two target players exchange their life totals. That's kind of mean. Um, yes. I like that a lot. It, it's because it's, it's such a simple like dicking with things without being like <laughs> without being like really like direct. Okay, so now I got a card page up. Yay! I mean, I as I've said before, I, I love the idea of pirates. Mm -hmm. I love Pirates make everything better, and <laughs> pirates on dinosaurs are even better. Yes. Pirates and dinosaurs and vampires and merfolk. Oh, my. They stole <laughs> that vampires. from me. I saw that, I saw that on Wizard's site, and I was like, they stole that from me. <laughs> it well, was like, technically, you both stole it from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it was like Wednesday that they came out with it, so they totally stole it from me. I'm going to say they did. Okay, and you stole it from Wizard of Oz. Well, you know, Wizard of Oz is a fine one to steal it from. The one thing I'm see I'm not see seeing is there a vampire pirate? I don't think so because I feel like the vampires of this world are very religious and that might be something that we would see like a renegade member of it because it looks like the pirates from what I've read are ref remnants of a another continent that was conquered by the vampires. Ah, uh, okay. That basically Got they it. they ran away and have become pirates. I want a vampire pirate. Mm-hmm. We might still get one. Or Vampire Dinosaur. <laughs> you could probably create one in some way, but it'd still be weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's probably a black card, just like you can make the all things zombies, maybe all things can be vampires. Very true. Um, Do you have a cup you want a little water? We have... The, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> like, uh, Sanguine Sacrament I like, where you gain twice X. It's an X cost card. I mean, the thing is, we haven't had a good li X cost life gain in a while. Um, like, you got, like, Stream of Life and Alabaster Potion, our classics. And then you had, um, what was it? Uh, 
like spring of nature it's not spring of nature i can't remember it it was a green one that you cost you four then you gain three life and each time after that you could pay an extra two and each time you pay an extra two you gain extra three life so it in the long run if you paid a lot of mana was more effective than a stream of life but it would take quite a while one thing i want to point out with artwork mm -hmm. that i'm really impressed with is the fact that they are actually they've like updated their dinosaurs to actually have feathers like we think in real life they may have had well we do have evidence of that now that some yeah at least some of them did which is really cool that they're which, like yeah, yeah that's what i think it's really awesome that they actually you know did that for the artwork that they added feathers and everything to them yeah and it were a lot more colorful i think that's one of those things about it is that like in, a lot of times in like more classic things we just see them as like very lizard colored when you know like with a lot of things they could have had very colors you know like you have to think about how much different colors lizards can have and stuff too even on own which we don't show with them in their classic like way you're showing dinosaurs off so no this is this is definitely a really cool way of uh displaying them i agree yeah i i do like that a lot um <laughs> Even where it's just like they have patches of feathers and then some lizard skin and stuff, but at least they've added the feather touch to it, which I like. Yeah. I think um, where I just saw the, dang it, I just lost it. I just just looking at one that was a oh, uh, Hero Fans Chalice, which is interesting, because when it comes into play, you, the opponent loses a life, you gain life, and then it taps for colorless mana after that. That's cool. I think that's kind of interesting. It's like, oh, you, here is a little effect, and then it's normal effect as you gain mana. Mm -hmm. I like, no, the, just one of the weird things that I do like, which it's so, like, it's, I can already see two reprint cards that I think were very interesting to be in here, right in the top of blue. Air Elemental, cancel. Yeah, those you are know. good cards. Air Elemental's just a classic, and it's like, right there, there. It's, it's, it's the fact is, we haven't seen it for quite a while anyway, but it's from Unlimited. Uh, yes, the color of the chameleons, Worm is mentioning. You know, that's a really good one for thinking about how dinosaurs would be. Agreed. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely uh, interesting. And you give all your creatures flying with this, anyway. Uh, favorable winds. It's a very nice enchant. All your creatures are flying enchantment. They haven't yes. had a good one of those in a while, too. Um. <laughs> I, I I love. I also love the fact that uh, vehicles are still being used. Uh, I'm hoping that's a sign that that's something that they might keep. They might do in it the like, artifacts. Yeah, they, they might just do it a little more. Uh, I guess wise. They might try to like you know use a little bit more wisdom in the way they do them. Yeah, it's it's a special type of artifact that you know may you may see in you know new sets and stuff, but it's not going to be, you know, the focus of a set. And it and, in, and how it's used in this one makes sense. It, they're ships. Yeah. For the pirates, so that completely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of them even is supposed to be like the uh, vampires' ship because they have to like come over too technically, but no. Uh, oh. Here's a new. Uh, here's another reprint too that mm -hmm. I just noticed in the artifacts. Uh, cobbled wings. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been seeing a bunch of them actually. Like Mark... I haven't. I haven't seen cobbled wings in a long time. No, I saw opt also. Yeah. That's one I liked using. Uh, Mark of the Vampire is in here. The thing is, like, I hadn't noticed up until now the actual. There's a large amount of reprints. Like, when we say large, we don't mean like huge. We mean, like, even, like, a dozen reprints is a lot more than you see a lot of times in some of these sets. Um, yeah. And it's not a bad thing. Oh, Demolish. I think that's a reprint, too. Yeah, Demolish is a reprint. Um, but it's just the little things like that um, that I think do combine a little bit of the set that's very interesting. Make everything kind of uh, fit together a little more. Oh, that's an interesting one. What? Which, uh... um, Dowsy Nagger. Because mm. it gives your opponent two zero two plant tokens <laughs> with Defender. It, it, as an equipment for the creature, it gets, the creature gets two plus, plus two plus one. But then if you deal combat damage 
to a play where it transforms into Lost Veil, which it taps for three mana of any one color of your uh, of your mana pool. That's kind of cool. So, so I, I think that's interesting. Also, it's an equipment that transforms into a land. That's the thing is, like, all the little transformations, since they all go to lands, it's very interesting. You Ooh. know? Also, um, Conqueror's Galleon. It's a 210 vehicle that when it, it attacks, exile it at the end of combat, it returns to the battlefield, <coughs> transformed. And the transformed ability has a whole bunch of things. Um, one, it can tap for a colorless mana. If you pay two and tap it, you can draw and discard a card. If you pay four and tap it, you can draw a card. And if you pay six and tap it, you return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Wow. Now, the transform ones are all very interesting that they have. Uh, the Conqueror's Galleon, like... The treasure map, all these. And I do like the four or the five that are one in each color because they're almost telling a story, you know. Oh, uh, the legendary enchantments? Yeah. Yeah. Th that, those, are re those are all really interesting. I also love that the white actually, get, uh, you create vampire tokens with it. Yes. <laughs> Which you wouldn't expect from white. Mm -hmm. But there's more white vampires too now. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, it's like, they all tell this, like, story of this, I guess, this one vampire's almost exploration for this lost city, it seems like. Right. Uh, and that's very interesting. The city for Azkanta. Um, or, like, legendary lands that these vampires... It's like, it's, like, based around the vampires, almost, it feels like. A little bit. But each one of them is very interesting. The, uh enchantments that change into lands and the lands are pretty good too i'm sorry we have uh iltimok which is effectively guy's cradle yeah which is the green one yep that's just and there's only 10 tra um uh double-sided cards yeah uh oh man yeah all these ones are really good the uh legendary ones they're just something about them that's just really awesome Cobbled wings. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even notice cobbled wings until now. <laughs> and I love the redesigned artwork on it, too. Yeah, it looks very nice. Uh, wow. No, that's the thing. is like They've done a very good job, as usual. The There isn't a huge amount of ships. I think there's only five vehicles, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, it looks like f uh, four pirate ships, and then the Conqueror's Galleon, which is for the vampires. Ooh, I like... I also like uh, Admiral Beckett Brass. Uh, yeah, he's a... Uh, Legendary yeah. Uh, pirate. Yeah. All the pirates get plus one, plus one, which is always nice. But at the beginning of your instep, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who is dealt damage by three or more pirates. <laughs> so if you have a way of like dealing like tapping damage with pirates, you can just steal things, too. Yes. It's a tricky thing, but... No, there's definitely a lot of cool cards in here that uh, it it and and the reprints are good. I think they're they're very well made ones. Um, though I have to remember which lands are. There's a couple of lands that you can see that's supposed to be Jace wandering about in them, which is really tricky. Oh, here it is: there's a forest, a swamp, and an island. At least he might be one of the plains and the mountains, but I don't see him right now. Oh no, yeah, there is the mountains. I don't see him in the plains unless it's. Oh no, there he is. He's. Oh, I see him. Yeah. Okay. The second to the, the second yeah. one in the first thing of him, he's standing on like a cliff edge. Yeah, I saw him. He's blending in a little bit. So yeah, yeah. I like that that he's that they have that little thing about him because he's supposed to be like lost here and they have him exploring all the terrain. <laughs> what you doing here? I'm just checking it out. <laughs> well, apparently, once you go there, you get stuck. So I mean, that's one of those things. You know, of course you get stuck with the dinosaurs. Because everyone wants to do the dinosaur. Uh, yes. You know you know what that was a reference of. I know what it was a reference of, and I'm, I'm ignoring most of that. <laughs> everybody do the dinosaur. Please don't. You don't need to do the dinosaur. <laughs> 
so yeah, so Ixalan, I think I am going to be pleasantly happy with what's what we're going to see. Uh, it looks really good. Um, I guess we're going to have to wait and talk about maybe some of the combos of it after the release, which is fine. Hopefully we can uh, get someone, someone will be magic related next week and we can really talk about uh, that portion of it, you know. And hopefully maybe we can play a little tonight after we buy some. We'll have to see. Yep. But uh, since we do want to get a couple of topics in here before uh, we do have to end it because it is a little early uh, day today, why don't we yes. move on and talk about Winter Eternal? So this was a very interesting one. I saw that once I saw it, it said to me, we should talk about this. So it is a Pathfinder campaign setting. And the entire idea of it is that the sun has gone out. So, effectively, everything freezes. But, some very wardens of nature decided they were going to save some portions of nature. Uh, effectively, when it happened, there was like a big explosion that destroyed the day side of whatever planet you're on. But the night side was still okay. But these winter, uh -huh. these wardens basically created these bastions of protected area where they used their magic to keep them alive. And within them, villages started... And now time has passed, so those villages have become cities basically protected by magical barriers that allow them to, like, have, I guess, a little bit of light and grow food and things like that. And have become a little bit... They, they claim it's a little bit, like, steampunk. That's Wait. cool. Yeah. And, like, there's apparently, like, pathways in between cities that they've kind of covered up so that you so you can travel in between some of these territories and there's people that explore the ruins of the wasteland with special suits and stuff you know that you can travel out into the basically freezing because there's no sun uh, okay so yeah um a few <coughs> years ago explorers came upon some orange crystals and an old crater they're calling them sun shards and when lights shone upon them they create heat which has led to an industrial and steam age revolution. Am I still good on site? No, I'm getting a, a, a thinking. I think I have to play around with something for a second. I'm, I'm having trouble loading in new screens. Ah. So. But yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I'm seeing in the synopsis though. So yeah, there is some steam. I have to, I have to stop it. it. I have to stop it oh. for a second. Uh, I'm not, like, getting signal on the stream. So I've oh, I'm seeing it. That's you, weird. I'm getting a, a, a thinking. Are you seeing me speak and stuff yeah. right now? Everything's still going. I don't know what's going on then. My side is, like, weird. Um... Ah, oh, that's weird. Yeah, I'm still seeing it saying live, and I'm still seeing us going. Let me... You, so you can... So let me try resetting my Firefox. Okay, okay. Maybe that'll work. Ah, uh, that wasn't the correct one to reset. Oh God, it's like I can't actually like look at stuff about it because my Firefox is acting up. Oh, uh, that's weird. But uh, you keep talking about it then. So since it looks, if it looks like it's still going on your, end, if you can see the stream still going, yeah, that's stream's fine. still going. Um, chat just said everything is fine here. Okay, thank you, chat. Uh, I can't see stuff right now, so I'm gonna try to get my system working. So Joe, continue talking, please. Uh, let's see. So now, hundreds of years later, there's six camps uh, that are six camps are giant cramped cities. Heated by magic, two cities are underground and is, and built inside edges of a chasm. The cities are now connected by enclosed roads called archways, and travel is now much safer. So, let's see. That's pretty much all I'm seeing on it. That's about what I heard about it. Oh, Firefox, I can't restart it because there's something like interfering and it, the last little bit of it's not going away and I'm in Task Manager. I'll worry Can about it Can you later. use a different browser? I'll use Chrome. Okay. I, let's see if the Chrome works. Chrome works fine. There apparently. you go. We'll figure that out later. Yes. But it, it seems like a really interesting um, concept. Oh, yeah. 
um, it's you know you have to travel in different ways. I'm I'm assuming magic travel between cities would be possible as well. Yeah, because you're doing Pathfinder. But I'm assuming you know it's not going to be super common because again it's not you're not going to have people super powerful usually. Right. And the cities are very they're big but they're very cramped because everyone no one can live outside them now. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I, I think that's it's you know it's an interesting you know wasteland scenario for a medieval type game. That's very true. That's starting to also use technology based on the sun shards. <laughs> so it kind of throws a little steampunk into your Pathfinder yeah. and some post-apocalyptic themes. That's very true. They call it post-post-apocalyptic is what I, I've heard someone calling it. Because it is supposed to be set like, there's this big apocalypse and this is the society that's been built after it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've already had our cataclysm of the sun going out. Society has rebuilt itself. We had our apocalypse. Now it's more of a matter of, you know, what's afterwards. You'll have to keep track of tra chat for me since I cannot interfere with it. Even Chrome is acting up on me a little bit. It must no be problem. Some... Chat's been pretty much quiet. Yeah. Something's weird with my internet a little bit. It's sort of there, but, like, <laughs> browsers are hating me right now. So, whatever. We'll fix it later. I might have to just reset the system once we're done here. Screw but, it. We'll do it live. No, I'd rather not do it live because then we'll go on live. It'll... I'm, picking... Yeah. I'm picking on you. I know. Ugh. But no, I, I thought, like, reading this, it was like... Because I'm guessing it's supposed to really be set mostly Pathfinder kind of world. It, it's got, like, a little bit of, it said, like, steampunk aesthetic to it that they've probably adapted a little bit of technology to. Because it sounds like this is, like, generations after then, and people have had to adapt. So Right. Okay, so I'm having an issue, just so you know, actually typing anything in the chat. It's not letting me send things to chat, but I can read chat. Let me see about on my phone if I can interfere with chat. So, it's it's not a big deal. I was just saying thank you to chat for letting us know everything is fine. <laughs> but for some reason, it's just not going into chat. <laughs> I'm trying at my phone to see if it sends. It sends Hello, on my oh, phone. Yes. Hello, chat again. Okay, so it works on my phone. Wow. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe something <laughs> with Twitch today. It could be something with Twitch today. Uh, uh, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll see how things go today with this entire thing. We'll keep going. Yes. We'll do it as, as the massive amounts of technical issues build up. Woohoo! Technical issues! All right, so um, I guess you went over the main basics of what we think about this entire one because it is effectively a very interesting, different uh, campaign setting that you can use with the Pathfinder system, which um, for those of you uh, that don't really understand the basics of a campaign setting, I mean, like so, most of you probably do. Uh, when you talk about D&D, &D, we talk about campaign settings all the time, but most of those are very similar. Like, Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance are really similar. So is Greyhawk. They're effectively the same thing with different, like, um, world settings. This I one... Just... Okay. This Sorry. one's probably vastly different. Because it is an entirely different world that's much different. So... I just thought of a really good idea, though. Okay. For um, something we were talking about last week, um, noir settings. Ooh. A noir in this would be really interesting, since it's definitely going to have to be city-based. Yeah. And with the technology skew, mm -hmm. I think it would really work in something like this. It would be sort of like, it'd have a little bit of the medieval feel, but also have a little bit of steampunk, and have this like kind of weird back setting, you know? Of, of things where you could you could take the mystery easily outside of the dome for some reason but you might not have to the entire time but that, no that would be really cool to do a noir in this setting stream chat says hi <laughs> stream cat yeah stream cat decided to show up we all love stream cat I know you know stream cat is the best cat except when it claws your thighs out uh, she will probably at some point in time today Yes, I know. She always does. She always does. But, um, 
so this is one that I think I might want to check out. I know it's on Drive Through RPG. Uh, I'm not sure how much it goes for on there right now. Uh, nine ninety nine watermark PDF. That's not bad. Ten bucks. If you want bad. the hardcover, it's twenty six, and soft cover, it's seventeen. Uh, see options. You oh, you can also get the hardcover book um and the pdf or the um uh, soft cover book and the pdfs for the same exact price right now uh, of the either the hard cover or the soft cover yes so there are, it's a sale going on uh the, the pdf is normally 15.99 but it's on sale for 9.99 and both the hard cover and soft covers you can get with the pdf the watermark pdf version as well so Nice bar. Dream cat. Oh my god, my first emote. Thanks, worm. I'm gonna tell you to tell <laughs> Ollie. Stream cat. <laughs> hey, maybe the second one could be stream I know, let's not do stream But stream cat shows up all the time. Because of nature of stream cat. Uh but that's a really great one. Okay. Um why don't we move on though? Because again, we are gonna do a little shorter episode here. Yes. Uh because of various reasons. Uh, what was numbered next on the numbers? Uh, 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 you had to, you wanted to talk about um, two new missions yes. for Shadowrun. Shadowrun, thank you. Uh, they are the two new missions. One is all about uh people disappearing in Chicago, which doesn't seem like something unusual, but uh, you're having a chance to, of course, you know, someone's sending you in, you know, because Chicago's a terrible place <laughs> with the containment zone containing insect spirits. So nothing changes in the future, is what you're saying. Chicago's a horrible place. <laughs> oh, come on, how many times has Chicago been like the point of like contention in movies or other things that it's like, oh, it's a it's a wasteland. Sorry, Chicago, if anyone's listening from Chicago, but people do say that. <laughs> I know, you know. Didn't um, RoboCop take place in Chicago? Detroit. Oh no, that was Detroit. Sorry, wrong city there. Uh huh. It, they sometimes are, like, compared in this, even though they're quite different, but... Yes. Um, but, uh, and the other adventure has... It, it, the, the setup is really simple. It's, there's a Mr. Johnson who comes to you with basically a... Something that sounds too good to be true. Here's a laboratory with incredible secrets that if you would get, you'd be very rich. <laughs> yeah, why would someone just say, hey, go check this out, you'd well, be rich? Well, it's more like... You check it out, bring it back to me, I sell it for you, you get some of the profit. It's like, mm. I have people I know would buy it. Because if you sell it yourself, you might not be as lucrative, you know. It's finding a proper person to purchase it for, from you. Yes. Basically, though, you take all the risk, I take, uh, I get most of the reward. That's usually how it is for most runners, unfortunately. True. But, no, I think it's just, I wanted to talk about because I do like that they're still supporting the system, and we don't hear a lot from them, actually, at this point anymore. Like, for a while, at the beginning of the year, I was hearing a lot from, uh, I'm not remembering the name of the company right now, and I can't look it up because trying to maintain too many things with not enough screens and not enough working I system. will check it. I will check. Cataclyst Games? It might be Cataclyst. I'm checking right now. Continue talking. Uh, Was there anything else that you wanted to go over? I just wanted to talk about it a little bit, because those both seem very interesting scenarios that are vastly different. Um, like, the one, it seems a little cliche, the, you know, guy that's luring you in with uh, something that's too good to be true, but yet you uh, would be tempted to do it. Topps Company, Inc. owns them. Really? Because I think Cataclysm is the one that does some does the actual products currently. Okay, because that's what I'm seeing or is. But maybe Catal Catal maybe they are a subsidiary of Tops. That could be true. Also, it could also be like remember Onyx Path pr punish publishes White Wolf, but they don't own it. Hmm. True. So it could be similar to that with Onyx Path. True. True that. Mm-hmm. Those tricky things that happen in amongst the systems. Uh, but no, I mean, I think that um, 
I'm glad that they're still supporting the 5th edition and we still see products coming out for it, even though they have been fairly quiet. I'm hoping fairly quiet means they're coming out with something really cool. And these little missions that they've been shoving, pushing out here and there have been very interesting. Though, I have noticed it has been very Chicago-centric as of late. And that's really because I can recall a couple of other missions that they've put out lately that were centered in Chicago. So, of course, that's like... It is one of the major cities. It is one of the more interesting ones with the, you know, uh, insect scourge and it being cut off from the rest of the world almost. Because of that, like, portions of it are completely sealed off. But... Crystal Game Labs is who publishes it. Okay. Crystal. See, I couldn't remember. I knew it started with a C. Yeah, before that it was um, FASA, but they closed in 2001. Yeah, FASA was great, but... Well, and it was acquired by Tops in 2003. No, which... FAS, FASA's still around, though. FASA has lost Shadowrun, but they still have the current version of FASA's doing Earth Dawn. Okay, because okay, um, in, the, in the Wikipedia article, at least, it says FASA from 1989 to 2001 when it closed its doors and the property oh. transformed to WizKids. Then um, it was uh, w that. Then that was bought out by Tops and Crystalline and Crystal Catalyst Game Labs. Hmm. Onyx might have bought out Wave Hoof. It's hard to say because I do know that um, they put their LARP material to another company and they're still producing that. I noticed, though I don't know enough about LARPing to actually like look into that for people. So if someone wants to help me out with some time with like well, information uh, of weekly see. LARP. Diamond Worm said... Let's yeah, see, yeah. Actually, I think on it... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's you what I was talking that. about. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. just making sure. Okay, so, yeah. That might be the reason they're doing the new additions, though it does seem like White Wolf is still separated to a degree. I just don't know how their connection is nowadays. I know how it started with that led to the V20s, or the... I'm sorry, the 20th anniversary stuff. And with the latest edition, which I think is technically third edition that's coming out... It's either third or fourth, which is really weird, because you... Oh, no, it's third, because there was a first, a second, and a revised, I think, of the original White Wolf materials. Something okay. like that. It's really weird and complex in the entire White Wolf universe. <laughs> Bringing that up is like a quagmire in this entire conversation. Okay, so Diamond just said they, um, Onyx Path bought World of Darkness, or... Yeah, they bought World of Darkness, not White Wolf. Okay. Because I know White Wolf still talks about is still connected to it directly, so it might be it might be like uh, a partnership. Well, it might be like a licensing, like you know how yeah. Fox does Marvel movies. They might have, and Fox has control of those rights. Then, so right. Onyx Pack might have taken over the rights of World of Darkness, though technically White Wolf is still the owner, you know, but they have all the rights to push publish, publish books for them. Right. Because it seems like White Wolf does stuff with world of darkness since we have seen like the other things that are produced in that genre to a degree like the vampire the eternal struggle stuff that came out for the anthology which right. i don't know if they have any more but um on the world of darkness berlin site you might be able to get the anthology cards still they were selling any extras they had a little while ago yeah so. it's a license according to diamond worm yeah so they have control of the license, right? Onyx Path does. I, f yeah. I figured it was something like that, but it's hard to, like... It's White Wolf can't do it on its own, basically. So someone else had to take over. Right. Uh, hi, Muffin. So um, did we want to move into the other uh, the sure. Splendor topic, then? Yeah, yeah. let's move on to Splendor topic again. Uh, apologies if we're going a little fast, but we did want to make this short, because Joe might have to, was probably going to have to leave a little early anyway, and I want to finish some of these conversations. Car troubles. Fun, fun, fun. Yes. Um, and I, ha I wasn't planning on a long episode this time anyway, because of some of the... Uh, th things I'll talk about in the, just the announcement video that I'll put out probably tomorrow. Um... But, so, uh, Splendor, I don't know a lot about the game of Splendor. Maybe you can, like, look up a little bit about that. But, um... Let's see, becoming... Uh, let's see... European Renaissance... 
open up more ways of becoming rich than the continent had ever known before. The new frontiers were emerging throughout America, Africa, and Asia, uh, Asia, Asia, global trade routes becoming a reality. Nobles once content with large castles and fur robes now sought dark sapphires and glittering diamonds. Craftsmen uh, ceased working on iron and began shipping gold. Merchants turned their attention away from space, spices and towards gemstones. Take the role of a Renaissance merchant striving to become a um, rich in splendor. As fast, elegant, and intuitive game for two or four, two to four players, begin collecting raw gems, and then use those to fund development of mines throughout the world. Once you've mined the gems, more gemstones, you'll need the means to transport them, artisans to shape them, and finally storefront where you can sell your polished <laughs> jewels. If you produce exactly the right jewelry, powerful noblemen become your patron. The player whose jewelry business earns the most prestige wins. So it's basically your Renaissance merchant. You're a ge- yeah, you're a gem merchant, gem slash jewelry merchant, and you're trying to get um, patron, you know, wealthy patrons to. Yeah, I thought it was. You. I thought it was a little bit about that, but I hadn't gone into as much depth as you did right there. But I was reading up on City of Splendor. So City of Splendor effectively introduces four new rule sets that you can choose which ones you use. And that's really less less the entire game itself. I wanted to talk about what this represents, which is very interesting. This is almost four expansions in one. They could have easily marketed each of these as their own standalone expansions that you could play on your own or add it in, but they put all four together, and I like that. Because I don't think each one of them would have been really big. You know, that's the thing about it. each one of these is a relatively small little expansion that adds a new level, a layer. It's not a big layer, but it's a layer nonetheless. And by putting them all together, it does give you a lot of options for the game. I think they're, was it like village? Castle? They've added um, new cities, new cities, amazing um, new powers. It should say under cards. there, like the four types of things under City of Splendor. Uh, it was on the website for the actual people putting it out. City. Yeah, I'm on Asmodee's website right now. Like the announcement Let's thing see. mentioned, like four the... years reveal the diamond puzzles for already European cities. Cities of Splendor offers you thrilling new ways to experience the game, opening the door to new levels of replayability without sacrificing the original game's elegance. Path to the Orient. Your first encounter with expansion cities of splendor leads you to the cities themselves. So they added cities. They didn't have those before. Yeah, so it's the cities, the trading posts, the Orient, and the strongholds are the four types of things they've added. Yeah. And the fact is, you can, as I say, you can mix and match which ones you play with. You could use trading posts and the Orient, which might sound like they work together, or trading posts and cities, or trading posts and strongholds, or just trading posts. And I think that adds an interesting new depth to the game. And definitely, as much as you already have replayability on this type of game, this adds a little bit more to that replayability, because you can play in such vastly different ways so easily like this. And I think yeah. that's interesting. No, it, it, I mean, it, it looks like a great game. You know, the original looks like a great game. I haven't tried it, but yeah. this definitely looks like it adds a lot more depth to the game, which is nice. Yeah, and and I do, again, I like the fact that we have effectively these four rule sets that you can use whichever ones you want whenever you're playing. It's It, it, it feels like when you're doing, like, uh settlers and you want to do seafarers or you want to do knights and cities you know those are vastly different things and you could technically play them together for really complexity but you could also play the original and each one of them has their own dynamic for the game granted those are usually a little more expensive to add those three together but um <laughs> well this expansion it looks like is a, 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 a price around 40 uh, 33 dollars that's not terrible for four different rule sets you know, you no. have to consider that there's less than $10 a piece when, if they probably sold them on their own, they probably sell them for $10 a piece. Yeah, and the, the interesting part, it doesn't add any more players. 
Mm -hmm. That's a tricky thing about it, is you always wonder if they're going to add more players. Yeah, because Cities of Splendor still is two to four players, and the original one was two to four. So they didn't add more players, they just added more complexity. <sighs> and which might be a good thing, too, because not sometimes you do want more players, but it's not always easy to add it to these games, and it's not always made to. I think as our friend Chad had said, uh, one time I was talking to him, they might recommend something like two to four players. But it might be that three players is the ideal for the game. And that those two and four, they're adding them in because you could play with that. But that's not the best way to play with that. And so adding more makes it more difficult to do. You know? Right. And, you know, if your base game was two to four players, it's not always better to make an expansion that adds more players sometimes. Yeah. Because, again, it's, it's the balancing issue of the entire game might not always work that way that you want with the nature of it there. Yeah, and playing time still stays around thirty minutes, so it, it th that's another nice part. It's not a you know extremely long game. It's something you can you know pull out and have fun with, but you don't have to dedicate a lot of time to. And adding in these layers is not supposed to add in the time, and that's a good thing too. That's one of those things that sometimes expansions do is they add in extra time also, which. Is Isn't bad. always bad, yeah. but, you know, if you're trying, if you don't have time to, you know, you don't have an extra 30 minutes to add to it, it's like, uh, well, I guess we'll play without the expansion today. Well, it's, yeah, it's also like when you consider something a lot different, like Arkham Horror, where the expansions, if you play them fully with it, will add time to the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, or, um, uh, Water, City, uh, Waterdeep. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Lords of Waterdeep. If you would play with all the expansions... Yeah, if you play with the full expansion, it's going to add a complexity to the game. That'll probably add a little bit more time. But then again, that one also technically adds more players, because really the balancing issue is being able to fit everybody on the board and doing everything at the same time. Right. <laughs> oh, no, completely. <clears throat> yeah, I think... It's I have to pause for a moment. I'm getting a call from the auto shop. I'll keep talking then. You know, I'll, I'll finish up about this. Yeah. No problem. But no, I, I think that's what's interesting about this entire uh, little board game here is that it's it's adding to the game without, to a degree, detracting from the game, which I think sometimes the expansions you can get for a board game don't help it. And that's a problem. You know, it, they can be fun to play with, but they are too large like you know arkham horror when we talk about that one there was like the dunwich horror and things like that that had entirely extra boards to the game that's a pretty big expansion while something like this layers on it and both are good but i feel like i would like more layered things sometimes too that that's the only thing i have to say about it really is that i feel like a little bit more layers sometimes wouldn't be bad so i'm glad that they did it this way it makes me happy. But um, I'm going to move on probably in a minute to the final section. We'll see. Joe might have to run off. I have a story from the table that I will share about. Um, I will give a couple of announcements. We should be back to normal time next week for discussing tabletop. Uh, normal amount of people. Uh, I should have at least one guest next week, hopefully. Um, I was just, you know, again, announcement video tomorrow. Uh, um and there will be update on the Twitch schedule, the YouTube schedule, and the upload schedule. That's an important thing, because it'll talk about how I'm going to be uploading the YouTube VODs. But expect a bunch of videos today and tomorrow and Monday to catch up behind where I was. And I hope people are enjoying the new hour-long VODs, because I stream too much games to switch them up to half an hour. So, uh, I'll give a little support there. But no, uh, I think what I want to talk about when it comes to stories from the table is I want to talk a little bit about how your game can take interesting turns. And the most interesting turn is I have been playing in a Pathfinder game where we start out with normal Pathfinder characters. We time traveled to the future to a Fallout-esque wasteland that was destroyed by nukes that were attempting to kill the Tarrasque. Yeah. Made it into a super mutant Tarrasque. We wandered the wasteland for a while, formed our own civilization, like formed our own city, found out that we could help the world by killing uh, outer dragons, killed all four of them, which turned out to free the Tarrasque, 
uh, got together with because there was both a machine faction, very Brotherhood of Steel, and a mutant faction, very kind of ghouls, and we combined with both of them to destroy that. And then we met aliens, who we got who they died when they started taking us somewhere. Uh, uh, what you find out? Okay, so I am going to have to uh, pop off. Um... Okay, go ahead. I'll finish what a story. I was doing a. I was just doing a story from the tabletop. I'll finish up that then. Okay. Sorry it was a short one, guys. Yes. But have a good night. Have a good weekend. And we have the game tomorrow, right? Uh, four o'clock to seven. That's going to be the new normal time. We're going to do two more weeks in a row. And then after that, we're going to move to every other week. Because uh, I will announce now, it, we have only three more sessions with our good friend, Whisper before her schedule is going to change. So we expect some new players coming up soon. So I will start, I'm going to be, I've been recruited, trying to recruit people, but expect them soon. So we will be continuing Treasure of the Lost Legion just with only the two original. And I don't even know if Frank's going to stay with Olog or do a new character, but the ship will allow for it. We'll at least have uh, Kellen to continue the adventures. At least one original! Wee! And technically, people, everybody else has been aboard the ship, uh, so they should know the... they Their characters should know the plot kind of thing, you know? Right. But. Okay. Well, you, everyone, have a good one. I'll talk to you later, Matt. Sure. And peace yep. out. Yep, peace out. We'll just uh, turn you... That's not it. Turn you off. There we go, so we don't have it interfering. So, why don't I just finish up the story? So, we went into space with the aliens that we found... We went to the moon. Turns out their race was trying to clone Tarasks. That was a bad idea. But that was creating black hole that they were using to clone them. Odd. Which was bringing in creatures that killed all the aliens. We got their ship. We learned how to use their ship. We theoretically defeated the Tarasks by sending them into a black hole. Didn't get rid of all of them. <laughs> Did not get rid of all of them. We flew to Galarian's version of Mercury. Where we saved some people that had been trapped by time portals time and space portals there we fought the megatrask again with a fallen god because the gods were gone from the apocalyptic wasteland the only ones that were there were the three human gods from galarian because we are in galarian the main setting of pathfinder uh one of them went all evil was trying to read the trask we defeated him and the trask uh then sent the trask in the moon into the sun then the pseudo machine god of this planet decided to assimilate itself with the actual embodiment of that physical god he was left of him. So then we had to kill that, and then I had to, then I helped to kill that, and then I killed that in the machine world because we had to go into a digital world to eliminate it. Uh, and then we've gone into space once again, where we've been exploring again, where we've managed to kill three demon lords, an imperial lord, and. Uh, well, okay. We've killed eight divine entities. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we're level 19 in Mythic. <laughs> oh, no, you know, uh, no, that's fine. Uh, CDOA. Maybe next week or something or, or something. You know, again, <laughs> uh, no, we'll be recruiting players, don't worry. I'll be talking to a bunch of people that I know. I'll see about that. Um, if anybody's particular interest in watches this, contact me on Twitter. Uh, as long as I've had some conversations with you, I can take a look at you, you know. Um, I'm going to try to recruit from people I know or people I've talked to, more or less. But again, if, you're, if you are just someone more random that's interested, we can talk and see if you'd be a fit for the game. Um, but again, I will be starting up other games, so if people are interested, I can talk to them about those other games. But... Back to the um, story at hand. So, um, yes, managed to kill off eight divine entities so far. And we've reached level 19, mythic rank 5. So, and we're probably going to get rid of more of them because we're insane. And we're also messing with, like, a mother of monsters, which is really ridiculous, and a machine lord, and... Oh, we, we nuked the Whispering Tyrant. We, we, we accidentally unleashed him, and then we had our paladin smite using spaceship laser. <laughs> he was the type of paladin that could actually do that. He could use guns for his smiting. He was like the uh, gun paladin. So we used spaceship laser and smited the Whispering Tyrant. And it turns out, because our GM has been using critical decks, 
which has been both a blessing and a curse because the critical decks can have some really great stuff and really terrible stuff. And one of our players has been specifically built to use the critical decks, which have unusual effects to your criticals. He got one where the magic of a target was suppressed for a number of rounds. And we killed the Whispering Tyrant while it was suppressed. And Rejuvenation is supernatural. So we actually killed the Whispering Tyrant. A super powerful lich. Because he didn't see it coming. It was really epic. That was, I think, one of the more epic modes. Though me beheading, like, uh, the uh, Baylor when it gets stunned was awesome, too. Like, the Baylor Lord fighter that, you know, like, I just took... Because I have a scythe, so I just took it to his head and just was like... You know, as he's just stood there stunned, I'm just like... Here you go. I have killed more things with my scythe than I... <laughs> would be impressive, you know? And also, um, interesting thing about myself. I'm a tiefling. I'm a clip-off tiefling because Pathfinder has that option of being other outsiders, which makes me very ugly and horrific. I am a hunter, uh, which is the hybrid class uh, druid ra ranger. I am a feral hunter, meaning I don't get an animal companion. I instead get abilities that I can use at will, meaning I can take on animal aspects uh, rather than just wild shaping, which I also get. So I keep taking on like weird combinations because I can take on two. So I'm like, I'm a bear owl. Grr. <laughs> Um, I'm also in power armor. I have a temporal accelerator in my brain for some technological artifacts. And I just gained another artifact. And I can't remember what it is because we just gained artifacts because we befriended... Uh, oh, because we killed the Whispering Tyrant, another former god who had turned into a lich in order to seal the Whispering Tyrant after the apocalypse were turned to being a god. Hey, that makes friends. <laughs> and that's what we just did last session. Got artifacts because we befriended... A, because we helped out a god in the end. We have done some crazy crap, and we're still not done, because our, our original goal, which we still might do, was to use a time dragon egg to travel back in time to when the Tarrasque originally fell to Galarian and eliminate it there, so that way the apocalyptic wasteland doesn't continue, but keep everyone on our ship, because if we take our ship back in time... Basically, everyone that we've saved from Galerion and some other planets, we basically assembled a, like, city ship, which was our base of operation, filled with, like, seven different races that have hit apocalypses that we've managed to encounter. So, it's craziness. But fun. It's fun craziness. It's surprisingly that the story has taken so many interesting turns, but I, I would have not expected, but I've liked it so far. Because we've combined certain things of, like, um... A lot of different genres. Because we very started out very Fallout. We have like a little bit of Battlestar Galactica now. You know, with like a whole bunch of different races trying to get along on the city ship. Things like that. Um, and so it's been a very interesting game. Uh, and I'm going to... I'm interested to see where it ends up. Which I'll probably give you guys an update on uh, later on. But sometimes I tweet out on Twitter what's going on in this game. But anyway, let's, let's end this. Um, again, we're about a half an hour early. But Joe had to leave. So I do want to end it. Um... So, again, I, as I said, Twitch schedule is relatively the same. I'm 4 to 7 for a Treasure Lost Legion tomorrow. I will be starting another Sunday game that's going to be every other week, along with Treasure Lost Legion, so the two of them will be, like, sort of a little back-to-back. -back. I'll have one, I'm planning for one from noon to 3. I'll have more announcements about that when I organize it more. Then 4 to 7 for Treasure. And then, hopefully, Tabletop uh, Simulator. Which, again, if anybody out there is interested in playing some tabletop simulator with us, that is something that I'm willing to try to, like, throw people into a lot easier than most other games. Then maybe multiplayer games with the crew. Uh, Monday should be Once Upon a Misadventure. That'll be the big thing there. Wednesday's the RPG show, etc. Twitch schedule is going to be an updated. I will be updating on the site as soon as I get the uh, everything on the internet working again. Because of technical issues, of course, once again. But thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, we'll be back next week, 1 p.m. Hopefully, we'll go for an hour and a half next time. Uh, more guests, at least one or two, I'm hoping. It seems like that's the schedule right now. Um, expect, of course, the VOD to be up a little or later in the week. There will be a schedule for that. Again, when I have that announcement that I'm going to put out tomorrow, that'll have the full schedule out. Expect more of the Once Upon a Misadventure adventures coming out today. That's going to be one of the reasons why it's going to be a little spammy in your, if you follow me on YouTube, is I am putting out the one-shots today. All three episodes of them. 
which makes it like there's going to be like seven or eight videos today. That will not be the normal schedule once I finally get everything stabilized, hopefully. Um, but yes, if you're interested in tabletop sim, just uh, message me on Twitter or something, or uh, message me on Twitch, Twitter, either of them, uh, Discord, any of them. Just send, just send me a direct message and we can talk about getting you on, you know. Again, I, I don't mind uh, grabbing some extra random viewers and stuff uh, for Tabletop Sim if I'm running it. Um, just because that's a little thing that, you know, it, it's a little bit more fun with people. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see here. Of course, I technically have some discords. I've got to update them. I'll let everybody know when they're updated. I have the Patreon if you want to follow there, which does have some cool rewards. Uh, you can always subscribe here if you really wanted to, or just at least follow and you can definitely subscribe on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so, that's it. We'll be ending it then. We're hitting about uh, a little less than an hour since we did start a little late. But thank you everyone for being here. And thank you everyone that's going to view this on the VOD. Uh, and I hope you had a good time. Uh, sorry this one is a little short and a little bit of a different one. But again, uh, if uh, you saw my me big message on Twitter, I am reformatting some stuff in my schedule to make it easier for me. And that's why... We have it the way. So I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your day. And I will at least see you, hopefully see some of you next time tomorrow for a little bit of Treasure Lost Legion. So uh, bye, everyone.